this sugya is selfish. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, now all the right, yeah, now I see. Now you realize folks are like many. Okay. So, um, one of the key verses we'll read tonight, uh, just to go into it, is 1 Corinthians 13, from verse 4 and 5. And I'll read it for us, and we'll come back, and I'll ask one of you to read it uh, later on. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 and 5 says that love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Does that not kind of summarize uh, in the opposite what selfishness is? Selfishness is very quickly resentful, um, irritable. Um, selfishness does, in its way, boast, it's rude, it's arrogant. So let's deal with that. Remember, this, the theme of our series is respectable sins. Not because sin is respectable, but because of how we have invited sin, of how we treat sin within a culture of acceptance, how we say that it's just a problem or an issue or a wrong, and not call it what it is and deal with it for what it is. And so one of the respectable sins, according to Jerry Bridges, is this selfishness. Now, let me ask, who can or who can try to summarize what selfishness is. What is selfishness? Worshipping yourself. You've got worshipping yourself. Self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Putting yourself first. Putting yourself first. Who else? Who wants to give it a go? Come on, a simple answer. Yay, nay. Okay, here's one. Selfishness is putting me before you. It's putting me before you. That's selfishness, right? And, and really, we live in a culture, isn't it, where I think one of the key phrases has become, you do you. Yeah. And, and it can be in a context of both ways. Like, listen, I'm just going to do what I want to do, and you do whatever you do. Or when we don't want to impose and someone is insisting, just say, hey, you do you, man. You just go on your way. And so really it's a culture that kind of accepts selfishness. I, I need what I need, and I'm going to get that at your cost. It's not going to cost me, it's going to cost you. Um, so selfishness is me putting my time above everyone else's time. Me putting my resources above everyone else's resources. My gifts, my whatever you think it is, it's you putting yourself first and in a sense that's something else our culture has kind of adapted and, and is pushing for it more and more and more is a lot of us especially the younger generation says i need to find myself i need to find myself well take a shower once you're done wipe down the mirror and look in the mirror boom there you are you have found yourself no but i need to travel I need to see and kind of like, I need to experience things. And, no, no, then you don't need that. That's not you finding yourself. That's, that's you wanting something else. That's not you finding yourself. In Christ, that's where we are. In Christ, right? That, that's where you find yourself. In Christ. All right, I don't want to rant. I, I want to deal with the situation in front of us. Can I say not all selfishness is equally bad? Can I say not all selfishness is equally bad? I have a yes. I have a lot of no's. Why not? Let's, let's answer that one because there's a lot of no's. Why would you say it's not equally bad? Is some forms of selfishness more severe or worse than others? Yeah? Why would you say yes? For example, I'm working and making something for myself because mm. I appreciate it. <laughs> 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 okay. Why, why, someone else, why would you say no? It's all equally bad. All selfishness is sin, and sin is breaking the law of God. But is some sins more severe than others? No. Yes. yes. No, some sins are severe, more severe than others. 
If I physically kill someone, it's worse than me being angry at someone in my mind and Jesus saying that's the same as murder. You understand? It's sin is sin, but some sins are worse than others. It's more severe, right? The consequence, I would say, by law, there's a standard. So, are some, or let me ask the question again. Uh, is all selfishness equally bad? Not necessarily. Is selfishness bad? Yes, of course it is. The same question goes, is all sin as severe as the next? Some sins are worse than others. But sin is sin, right? There will always be the consequence for sin. Are some sinners worse off than other sinners? Again, yes, you have someone physically murdering people, raping people. You, that's way worse than someone lying, but they're still a sinner. Okay, are you on the same page as me now? Yes. You, no, if you're not, we'll come back to that later. <laughs> All right. Okay, so selfishness is bad regardless. Now, I want to distinguish. On the more innocent side, we have an inattentive person. So, he's helping other people if he notices them, but he's also wrapped up in himself, okay? That's why he's not noticing other people. He doesn't notice them. So, that's selfishness because not, he's not being indifferent to other people, to their needs or scorning them, but he's just not noticing them because he's wrapped up in himself. Are you with me? That's, that's one side of the scale. Then we could go on the other side of the scale and say, there's someone who notices a need and refuses to help with a specific need at hand because of self-care or self-interest. So what would you say is worse? Someone who is being inattentive or someone who realizes and just doesn't care? Right, so now you distinguish. But when I asked you the first time, you said no. Okay, so if not all selfishness is equally bad, all of it is bad. Let's just agree to that. Because no form of selfishness resembles Jesus Christ. Amen. Was Jesus ever selfish? Not that we know. Of course not. Of course not. Do you think as a, if you have toddlers or if you have kids, um, what do they do? As kids, they fight for the toys. And they want all of the toys. It's actually a photograph I have of when I was a kid. And my mom was taking care of other kids in the neighborhood. And in the photo, I'm sitting with all my toys on my lap, <laughs> hugging them. And one of the kids my mom was taking care of in the photo is just looking at me. And here I'm sitting with all the toys. That's selfishness. Oh, it's cute. No, it's a little viper. That's sin. That's a problem. Bring a spanking. Okay, so... Selfishness is bad, and it doesn't resemble Christ. Um, turn to 2 Corinthians 8 real quick. 2 Corinthians 8. Um, see, what did I say? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Who's going to read that first? Amen. Okay. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. Right. That's the attitude Jesus had. That's the attitude we ought to have. So unlike a person who is inattentive, Jesus notices our poverty. He notices our need. He notices our weakness. And he set aside his own riches for our sake. Are you with me? That's specific. That is purposeful. That is intentional. And having studied Mark's gospel over the last couple of years, I wanted to go to Mark chapter 6 for an example here. Mark chapter 6. Real quick, you can just follow along in that narrative. I'll summarize um, I won't necessarily read it word for word, but I want you just to see what's happening. Um, as I just give you a brief summary. Mark chapter 6, 
So what's happening is um, the people have Jesus and their disciples and his disciples so busy that they don't they don't have a chance to get away. I mean, they don't even have a chance to sit down and eat by themselves. People are just pushing them, wanting more and more and more. And as the the narrative unfolds, they try to get away from the crowd, right? But guess what? Not only after they seek to a deserted place, sooner the crowd catches up to them. And so this is what happens. Being very pushy, being very rude, being very nosy, instead of scolding the people, what does Jesus do? He shows compassion. In fact, there's a portion in Mark's Gospel that said he had compassion for the people. And being compassionate to them, he continued teaching the the Word of God. But by now, these people are hungry, man. Not for the Word, but for bread. So what does Jesus do for this crowd? He feeds them and then sends them home with full bellies. Alright? So a selfish Jesus would have scolded the people and chased them off. But no, no. The example of Jesus is he brings the people near to himself continues to teach them, and yet he first feeds them before he sends them their way. Now we know how the narrative turns out, right? At the end of the day, Jesus did rebuke them, because they came back for more. Not more of the word, but more of the bread. And Jesus said, no, 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 we're not here for this. We're not here for this, right? But he didn't do that the first time. He showed compassion. He was open. Now, obviously, we can't live up to the standard, right? How do you feed 5,000 people? Cheryl, we fed 40 people over two days. That was crazy, right? It took a lot of preparation. Try doing that with 5,000. So we surely cannot live up to the standard. And I don't think that's what is meant in these portions, right? We also cannot ignore Christ's example. So I want to say on a theoretical level, selfishness is putting yourself before others. And more personally, it's living unlike Jesus. Whenever you live unlike Jesus, you're being selfish. You're being selfish. I'm not saying go and get the bracelets. What would Jesus do? I think a lot of the times we think Jesus wouldn't do something and so we don't do it when he might have done exactly that. Such as cleanse the table and pull out the whip. People still don't get that, how Jesus was angry and didn't sin. But he did. Okay, now practically, we can be selfish in many ways, okay? You can be generous with your money. Who's generous with their money? I'm going to come hang out with y'all. All right, lunch is on you. <laughs> You can be generous with your money and yet be stingy with your time. It's selfishness. Do you follow? Someone may work overtime at his job with no complaint, but the moment he has to go home, he resents every minute of it because he doesn't want to be with his family. It's selfishness. It's selfishness. Marriages often break up because mothers give and give to their children having nothing left for their husbands. You see that in counseling. Marriages go sour and it ends sadly in divorce. Um, Another example, or rather Jerry Bridges gives us a good example in his book. In this book, he tells us um, that his own problem was the time he spent with his grandchildren. The time he spent with his grandchildren. You won't think, oh, but that's, a, that's not a bad thing. It's good. It's been time with... No, no, no. When, when you take that and make it the priority, you put that above everything because it interests you, it's selfishness. It's selfishness. So I want us to look tonight at um, four areas of, of selfishness. I know there's more, but... Um, we don't have the whole night. I do, but I don't think you want to be here. Okay. <laughs> Not on a Friday. <laughs> All right. So, number one, the first area of, of, of selfishness is our interests. Our interests. 
And again, I want to go to Jerry Bridges' example. His main interest at this time, more or less when he was writing the book, was his <coughs> grandchildren. And he said that they are the best looking kids who ever lived and everything they do is amazingly brilliant and precious. <coughs> right? Now, it, it's hard to find fault with someone that you know, spends so much time and wants to spend so much time with their grandchildren. You would think, you would commend someone for it. Like, you're just such a great grandparent. Look at that. Now, the thing is, he was prattling about how these kids are so important and how bright they are that it was self centered It's self centered It's his idea of them. And he was putting that idea above everything else. Are you with me? It's like a mom and with her own kids going to the sports ground. My kids are so good. They're going to have black belt by 60. My kids this, my kids that, my kids, my kids, my kids. It's selfishness. Because you're prioritizing the image of those kids. In fact, that becomes idolatry. But that's when parents start to worship their children. All right. Now, some people can be this way about their health. Just be frantic about their health. Just everything they eat, everything they do, everywhere they go. If someone's sick, won't come. I don't want to get sick. Some people could be this way about their work. It's just always about my work. Come to the meetings. Always my work. This is what's happened with me. Woe is me. This is what's going on. This is wrong. It's always mine. It's always me. Right? Another place or area uh, where we elevate our interest is... Our hobbies or sports. It's always me, mine. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I've created this. This is the sport I'm doing now. This is the sport I want to do. I'm always on the golf course. You're putting your interest above everyone else. My interest comes first. Not my family, not the church, not my friends. None of my interest has to be on top. And then I'll listen to whoever else, right? I would have ran for the next half an hour about how my week was terrible at work, and then I listened to you for five minutes. It's selfishness because you're putting your interests first, okay? Um, there's nothing wrong with discussing your health. There's nothing wrong with discussing your favorite movie or sport. But before we go on about just it being mine and my favorite or my team is the best team, how often do we ask about those we're communicating with? Hey, but what about you? What do you like? And why do you find that interesting? Why do you like that? Why are you engaging in it? Being concerned with ourselves is actually condemned in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's read that real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Can I ask Ponsail to read that aloud for us? Talking about people who are selfish with their own interests. This is what I like to listen to. This is what I want to hear. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. Me, me, me. Right? Now there's a second area of selfishness, and that's time. Time. T-I-M-E. Time. <clears throat> Now listen, we all have various things to do. Um, and here's the thing, we only have so much time to do them. Are you with me? How many hours in a day? 24. How many of that are you asleep? Eight. Now I need to stay in those houses. Eight hours, this is amazing. 
right? So eight hours of sleep. So 24 minus eight, where are we at? 16. You have 16 hours. How much of those hours are you at work? Eight. 10, eight, <laughs> nine, right? So 10, nine, between eight and 10 hours you're at work. That leaves you with six hours. What do you do with those other six hours? Get <laughs> ready for work. Hey, cook. I just chill. I do me, you know. I do me. Time. I understand that we're all busy, but we only have so much time. Okay. So here's the thing. If I give you of my time, I have less of it for myself. Do you follow? If I have 24 hours in a day, and I give you four hours, that means I have four hours less to myself. Does anyone just want to give away their time? Naturally, no. No. Because I have to give so much of my time to my work. I have to give so much time to my family. I have to give so much time. So I only have two hours, and it's my two hours. So the moment someone asks me to come and do something, and it's going to take two hours, and I lose my two hours, and I don't do it, what does that say? I'm selfish, right? As a whole, there are times, and this is what I want to clarify before we go into it, there are times where you have to say no. And that's part of what I want to deal with here, is in a sense, we can be selfish by giving away our time to everything else except to that which we need to give our time. So instead of giving the time to our family, we put it somewhere else. Instead of giving our time to preparation, we spend it somewhere else. Are you with me? So there's a positive and a negative to, to wanting time and just giving our time away recklessly. So um, perhaps I'm happy to say no to someone if they need counsel. But no, I don't want to come. But then you get an invitation to go bright. Oh, I'm going to go bright. Yeah, let's, let's take six hours and just go bright. That is selfishness because I'm looking out for my interests once again. Um, I want to continue. The thing is, your time, my time, isn't really my time. It's not really your time either. So whether it's TV time, reading time, exercise time, nap time, our time belongs to God. And God wants us to use this time effectively, right? But also compassionately. Compassionately. Um, maybe I could here interject the parable of the Good Samaritan. We see three examples. The first two people pass, and then the Samaritan comes to help, to help the man on the street, right? Do you think the Good Samaritan had something to do? His time was also limited? Of course. Of course it was. Because we read that the moment he could drop this person off at the end, he was on his way. So he was on his way somewhere. Perhaps it made him late for whatever meeting he had to attend. Still, he was willing to give or willing to sacrifice that time. Everyone else might have had the time, and yet they weren't willing to sacrifice it. In the case of the Good Samaritan, I don't think he necessarily had the time, but still he gave it. Do you see where I'm, where I'm going with this? No one did more than Jesus himself if it comes to time. We see in the Gospel that when it was the woman grabbing at his garment as he passed through the crowd, he stopped. He took the time to recognize her. He took the time to even engage with her. And when we read that section, it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. She reached out in faith, trusting he would be, she would be healed. And she was. Jesus says, your faith had made you well. Be on your way. Right? He didn't need to, I believe, but he did. Furthermore, when mothers came up to Jesus with their babies and said, bless our babies, did he not stop and do that? It was disciples that said, no, 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 he doesn't have time for this. But Jesus said, bring them. Bring them to me. More so, we have examples where a letter rushes to Jesus saying that he needs to go to Bethany before Lazarus dies. Jesus couldn't go to Bethany at that point. 
it still he did go around to Bethany and he resurrected Lazarus. He took the time of the cross. So right. To speak from the last moments to that time on the cross. That's correct. That's 100%. In his dying moments, um, we see the thief on the cross come to salvation and Jesus took the time. You're 100% correct. So here's the thing, friends. Instead of seeing these things as interrupting his life, Jesus saw them as his life. It was part of his life. He didn't see these things as messing up his plans, with air quotes, but he saw them as fulfilling the Father's plan. I think that's how we need to look at time. When we're so focused on time, my time, I'm late, I'm rushed, it's not our time, it's God's time. And God's given us this time to use effectively, but also compassionately. Listen, when you waste your time procrastinating, it's also selfishness. But it's also a form of idolatry. You're saying that you own time, therefore you can waste it. You get it. When we're just wasting time, we're saying, I, I have this license to the next five hours in my life. And I can just do with it what I want. Do with it what I want. There's a difference between resting and wasting time. When you rest, you need to rest. Okay. Now, there's another one. The third area of selfishness is money. Money. Is money the root to all evil? No. Why not? Amen. We have exegetes in the house. That's correct. It's the love of money that leads to all kinds, or can lead to all kinds of evil. So, talking about money, perhaps we feel moved, right? When an organization reaches out with a story. Uh, Chris spoke about it the other day when he was preaching. There's a quite a big organization uh, in South Africa that goes on radio and a family will call in and say, you know, we, we need 30,000 Rand for surgery. And strangers will donate. People have no idea who these people are. And they will donate and at the end of the day they've raised 100,000. We go, great, that's awesome. Well done. But we will, know, we will sooner give money to strangers than we will to those we know who need it. We have a brother or sister that knocks on the door and says, listen, I need 200 bucks. Uh, yeah, I just gave away 400 bucks to this person having surgery in Pretoria. Uh, out of them. Is that selfish? Yes. You have a brother, a sister, a Christian a fellow neighbor coming to you with a need, you have the means, but you say, no, no, I, I've, already, I've already given. Like, when a car guard comes up to you, and you say, and I, I know Chris used this example as well, a car guard comes up to you and says, well, um, you didn't hear me when I asked, but I did watch, do you maybe have two rand for me? Oh no, I give to car guards all the time, I don't need to give now. If you don't want to give, you don't give. But when we make these excuses, it's selfishness. It's selfishness, all right? People come and they ask for money. There's context. There's context. I'm not saying judge by appearance. I'm saying investigate why someone needs money and why do they smell the way that they do when they come and ask you for money, right? If he's smelling like alcohol or glue, I know what he wants the money for. So I'm not going to give it to him, all right? Let me continue. Um, here's what we learn about God's people in the New Testament when it comes to money and not having money and still giving that money. Paul tells us not to support lazy Christians. <laughs> Paul rebukes us. I see it in Thessalonians when he talks about those who are idle. But I think we've become you know, a lot more sensitive to this regard. Now we don't want to give money to anyone. So no, don't do that. Christ and the apostles themselves gave contributions to the poor, right? 
And what makes this remarkable is that Christ and the apostles themselves were poor. You know that. People want to use Jesus in the prosperity gospel and to say, but he had everything he needed. Jesus said, I don't have a place to lay my head. And when he needed to pay tax, what happened? He said to Peter, go. Catch them fish, and when you find it, take out and you pay. You didn't even have that. Yet Jesus gave, right? The apostles went when asked and they could, they gave. We see one example where Peter and John physically had nothing on them, which tells us they were poor, said to the man, We don't have these what you asked, but what we do have is this. And they told him, get up and be healed. Go on your way. Right? James rebukes us. Where he says, when a brother or sister comes and they are in need and you are able to help, but you say, go on and be filled and find your rest. It's what? Vanity. It's vanity. You have the means, but you say, oh, go on, I hope you're filled. I'll pray for you. That's selfishness. Are you with me? Um... Now, unless you have a lot more money than what I do, (laughs) most of your money is spent on you and your family, isn't it? I'm not. I don't want to see your bank accounts, please. I don't want to cover it. (laughs) But what I want to say is, if we're only spending on ourselves, if we're only spending on our our money, well, let me say this: the one thing on your bank statement that you've spent the most on, month after month. That thing is possibly your eye. Are you with me? The one thing that you are spending most of your money on, month to month, is most likely, let me not say most likely, but it's probably your eye. If it's your kids, why are you spending some? No, but they need new shoes. They got new shoes in the beginning of the year. Yeah, but it's now almost second term. New shoes. Um... Going on a holiday for a second time in, in two months. If you can't do that, great. But you're, sp- you're, you're making other sacrifices to spend it on that selfish desire. Are you following what I'm saying? What we're putting our money towards, that's the thing our, love, our heart loves the most. Practical example, as a student, I, I love being in the gym. And with the, with the little bit of money I was working for, would come in, a third of it I would spend on food and supplements specifically for my diet and for gym. What was happening? I didn't think of it until someone came and said, hey, what do you think is an idol in your, in your life? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have idols. Well, what do you spend your money most, most on? Gym. Says, How much do you love gym? I took this sabbatical for three months. Just stopped going to gym. Like, nope, this is wrong. This is wrong. All right. Good. So, maybe a few practicals uh, real quick. So, most of your money can be spent on your family or yourself, and there's nothing wrong with it, but when we spend it on entertainment or charity, which is that which comes on top most months? You may answer um, that it's more about you than what you wish you did, and there's a last way of being selfish. It's to be inconsiderate. Being inconsiderate. It's the final form of selfishness. Being inconsiderate. Now, if it gets touchy, listen, I must say that's the Holy Spirit working in your heart. But it's very easy for us to be inconsiderate. I think millions of Christians live and die with with hardly having the thought of how they have affected other people negatively. I'll give you a few examples. So, a simple example is this. I'll I'll start out meek and kind of go into it. A simple example of being inconsiderate is not picking up after yourself at home because you know your mother or your wife will just do that for you. That's being inconsiderate. That's selfish. 
I'm not talking about the sweet spot. Okay, two. So there's a sweet spot. Right? The sweet spot is, is the clothes I put next to the laundry basket, which I'll wear again when I need to. Okay. Now pick up my sweet spot. We've discussed that. Being rude to someone that works in pick and pay or checkers at the till or a waitress or act as if he or she should have divine attributes to know exactly what it is you want or need. Being rude or inconsiderate to those serving you. That's in other words, like you got to pick and pay and then this lady just doesn't understand you. You get furious. You're getting upset. Where's the manager? You're useless. Man, I see that sadly so much. And I step in when I see it. I step in. I'm like, hey, it's it's really not necessary. Yeah, but these people. Like, now you need to chill. Because the next thing that comes out of your mouth, that's on you. Um, a waitress. A waitress gets the order on. Oh, my God, this place. Where's the manager? I'm not eating this. I'm not paying for this. <laughs> that's the same problem. It's being on, inconsiderate, right? Um, how about this? You treat everyone the same, not allowing that some people can... Um, so what we do is, we, we, we might like to joke around. I'm not saying in the sense our scripture condemns us, but we like to joke around with others. And the moment someone jokes back, we get offensive and upset. Right? I'm not saying anything below the belt. I'm, I'm literally talking about someone comes in the room and you come in with an afro and you didn't plan on it. You're like, whoo, look at that hair. I come in the room the next day with a similar style and say, like, whoo, look at that hair. And I get upset. And I just lash out. That's being inconsiderate. It's a terrible example, but it's what we do. Um, another one. You talk too loudly in public places or about things that are better discussed in private. You play your music too loudly. You let your dog bark all night. Um, <laughs> it's inconsiderate. Believe it or not. Yo, but it's my dog. What if they're chasing away intruders? Go look if it's intruders. Like, that's a kind thing to do. Make sure your neighborhood's safe. Now the dog goes rawr, 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 all night. You don't get sleep. That's selfish. It's inconsiderate. Talking too loudly in public. Gossiping, like shamelessly. You walk into an area and people are gossiping shamelessly about someone who isn't there. And you go, huh. If, if, and if they walk in, oh, no, don't worry about that. It's fine. And then we might even engage. Listen. An inconsiderate, an inconsiderate person is a selfish person, right? An inconsiderate person is a selfish person. And listen, we quickly, I think we get we get annoyed when someone is being inconsiderate. You go to which which store is it in town that has small aisles? Uh, you go to spa or checkers. Checkers has smaller aisles than spa. You go to checkers. And there's this huge trolley, pa, and then you have the guy obviously packing the shelves. And now you get annoyed because this person stops their trolley next to the packer and now you can't pass. Hey, move! But next time that next time that's you, and someone says, hey, can you please move? Oh, can you wait? Busy. That, that's inconsiderate. You want to be quick to switch on. That thing that identifies as inconsiderate people, but the moment someone calls us inconsiderate, we go, how dare you? You don't know me. You don't know what I do. No, an inconsiderate person is a selfish person. You complain, a taxi skips the, the, the stop sign, but you too are quick to rush over it if there's no We're both in the wrong. We're both in the wrong. We stop in the middle of the street and have our conversations. But when someone else is doing that and I can't pass, blow the horn. See what's happening. Double standards. It's a hypocrisy. So how can we overcome selfishness? 
Firstly, it's to admit that we are guilty of it. It's to admit that we are guilty of being selfish. And not adding a list of buts to the confession. I'm selfish, but I'm not as bad. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He who covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. So admit, confess and repeat. Um, how can we overcome a selfishness? Meditate on the golden rule. What's the golden rule in scripture? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yes? Watch them trolley. Another way is to identify people who are not selfish. Watch them carefully and do what they do. Philippians 3 verse 17 gives us the example of Paul. He says, Brethren, be followers of me and mark those who so walk as you know have within them the example. It says, follow my example. Follow the example of Christians, right? Also, which is most important, is meditate on Christ whose life is the model of unselfishness and whose will is to make us like him. Mark chapter 10 verse 45. Son of, son of man came to serve and not be served. And what was the extent of his service according to that verse? He gave his life as a ransom for me. Amen.